One of the keys to a deeper understanding of the interpretation of EEG is understanding the basis of EEG montages. One of the things we have to remember is that the basis of EEG is the differential amplifier. We have to keep at the top of our minds the fact that EEG output is always relative. For this reason, we have a variety of ways of looking at EEG, which we call montages. We will go through four of these five montages in this video. The most commonly used montages in EEG interpretation are bipolar montages. A bipolar montage is based on the principle of comparing a single EEG electrode tracing to its adjacent neighbor. One of the commonest bipolar montages is the anterior-posterior bipolar montage. Going through this systematically, we may start by comparing FP2 to F8. This will generate a tracing, which we call a channel. This can also be called a derivation. We will then continue posteriorly, starting at F8 and going to T8, generating another channel or derivation. We will continue posteriorly to generate a chain of electrodes along the temporal aspect of the head. Eventually, we put a number of these chains together to generate a montage. This is an example of an anterior-posterior bipolar montage. Going through this systematically, we can see that this particular montage is arranged as if we are looking at the top of this patient's head while they are facing rightward. First, we have the left temporal chain, then the left parasagittal chain, then a midline chain in the middle, then a right parasagittal chain, and finally a right temporal chain. There are institutional variations in the arrangement of these chains within a montage. However, in general, left hemisphere electrodes are shown on top of right hemisphere electrodes. Another type of bipolar montage is the transverse bipolar montage. This transverse bipolar montage is arranged as if we are looking at the top of the head and the patient is facing upward. First, we have a short chain over the forehead, then a longer chain extending from left to right over the front of the head, then a very long chain extending from ear to ear, left to right, then a parietal chain, and finally a short parietal occipital chain. The transverse bipolar montage is particularly good at focusing one's attention to the center of the head. Many sleep transients are maximal at the center of the head, and so transverse bipolar montage can be useful at looking at sleep. The second type of montage we will discuss is the common reference montage. In this situation, we compare the signal at every electrode position on the head to a single common reference. One of the most common common reference montages is the CZ montage. In this situation, we compare every electrode on the head to CZ. The first channel or derivation we will look at is F8 to CZ. We then move posteriorly, comparing T8 to CZ, and then finally P8 to CZ. In this way, we generate a chain much in the same way as we generated a chain in the anterior-posterior bipolar montage. This particular CZ reference montage is arranged in the same way as the anterior-posterior bipolar montage. First, we start with a left temporal chain, then a left parasagittal chain, then a midline chain, then a right parasagittal chain, and then a right temporal chain. There are many other types of common reference montages, and in fact, we can compare signals on the head to any reference we like. For a reference that is not very close to the middle of the head, another option is the ipsilateral mastoid montage. You can see here that all of the electrodes on the left side of the head are being compared to a single electrode attached to the left mastoid. We can also compare electrode positions to the contralateral mastoid. There is a tremendous amount of freedom in organizing EEG montages, and we will discuss a little bit about why we might choose looking at one montage compared to another. The next type of montage is a common average reference montage. In this situation, we compare the signal at each position in the head to the average of the rest of the head. Let's first look at F7. What we would do in this situation is compare F7 to the signal everywhere else in the head divided by the number of electrodes. However, because FP1 and FP2 are very susceptible to eye movement artifact, and because O1 and O2 are very susceptible to head movement artifact, they are generally excluded from the average reference montage. Therefore, we are actually comparing each electrode position to a 
smaller sample of all of the electrodes on the head. One of the main considerations with average reference montage is a concept called reference contamination. One way to conceptualize reference contamination is to look at how we deal with averages. In this situation, let's take an average-sized man. If we compare him to a group of other average-sized men, we will say that he is of average height. However, if one of the men in the comparison group is larger than the other men, then we would come to the conclusion that our gentleman is of below average height. This is actually the effect of the outlier in the comparison group and has nothing to do with our man who, as we said before, is of average height. In fact, this will make all other men within the group appear to be of below average height, which can be very misleading. Now let's look at how this might affect findings on EEG. This is an anterior-posterior bipolar montage during sleep in a young person. Here we can see a number of vertex waves maximal along the center of the head. If we look at these vertex waves more carefully, we see that the maximum is at C3, Cz, and C4. Therefore, we have an electrical field that looks something like this. Because this is a very high voltage field in a very limited area, it acts like our very tall man, changing the average of the rest of the head so that the average over the entire head is negative. Now, when we take an electrode position that is not involved in this field and compare it to the average of the rest of the head, we can say that O1 in this example is neutral and the average, as we said before, is relatively negative for the rest of the head. Therefore, it will appear like O1 is positive with respect to the average of the rest of the head. O1 appearing electropositive is very similar to the average men in our previous example appearing small. Now, if we change to an average reference montage, we can see that while it is true that C3, C4, and Cz are relatively electronegative, there is also the false impression that all other waveforms are electropositive. This is not a reflection of any true electrical phenomenon, but rather an example of reference contamination. One way to get around reference contamination is to use something called the Laplacian montage. The Laplacian montage is probably used least often among EEGers, mainly because it is very difficult to conceptualize this montage. In general terms, we are always comparing one electrode position to an average of its nearest neighbors. In this example, we would compare Cz to its four closest neighbors. We express this as a first input, which is Cz, and a second input, which we call Cz prime. Cz prime is an average of the four adjacent neighbors. Special consideration has to be given to electrode positions on the edge of the head where there are fewer adjacent neighbors. When looking at T7, for example, we would derive T7 prime as an average of its three most adjacent neighbors. Here is an example of how a Laplacian montage might be laid out. Again, it is laid out in a very similar way to our other montages, left over right, with temporal chains, then parasagittal chains, then the midline. Let's take the example of a right temporal sharp wave as seen in this example on an anterior posterior bipolar montage. The sharp wave can be seen best in the right temporal regions with some extension into the right frontal regions. If we mapped out the field, it might look something like this. The phase reversal is at F8, and so we would say that this field is likely maximal at F8, and so we might include a maximal negative contour at F8. When we look at this on average montage, we see that indeed we do have maximal electronegativity at F8. We also have a field that extends to FP2, F4, and T8, which are in all involved in our theoretical field. But then we see a lot of electropositivities in electrodes that are not anywhere close to our field because of reference contamination. If we instead change to the Laplacian montage, where we are only considering most adjacent neighbors, we can see that the field is very focal, involving F8, with some involvement of FP2 and T8, as we had hypothesized before, but no reference contamination. You can see here on the left the Laplacian montage, and on the right the common average reference montage, 
with reference contamination seen best in the left hemisphere. The Laplacian montage has some limitations, especially with very broadly distributed electrical discharges. One example would be this normal K-complex during sleep. Again, I have shown it in an anterior-posterior bipolar montage. You can see that this K-complex has a very broad field extending throughout much of the anterior aspect of the head. Let's say that the field involves this general area and is approximately maximal in the frontal central region of the head. Because the Laplacian montage compares one electrode to only its closest neighbors, in an electrical field that is very broad, there might not be much difference between one electrode and its most adjacent neighbors. And we can see that when we switch to the Laplacian montage for this K-complex, things flatten out and it is very difficult to see. To summarize, Laplacian montages are not good for broad electrical fields. So we can ask the question, what if we choose a distant reference? A distant reference might have the advantage of being very far from our broad electrical field, so that the comparison between the activity within our field and at the distance electrode will be greatest. One type of montage that we might want to consider is a common reference montage to the ipsilateral mastoid process. This is far away from the area of interest, and so we would hypothesize that this would generate the maximal amount of contrast between our large area of interest and the reference. And we can see that when we do apply the ipsilateral mastoid montage, we get very high voltage activity accentuating the K-complex. Again, if we compare the ipsilateral mastoid, a distant reference montage, to the Laplacian, which compares only adjacent neighbors, we can see a dramatic difference in the electrical activity. We can also look at how different types of montages can look at a broad area of slowing in one hemisphere. In this example, I have included a short segment of a recording of a patient who just had a seizure arising in the right temporal region. It is difficult to see, but there is some polymorphic theta and delta activity in the right temporal region. Again, this has a very broad field, and if we were going to hypothesize the field, we might show it something like this. Again, when we use the Laplacian montage, where we are comparing only to closest adjacent neighbors, it's very difficult to see the slowing. But we may apply a distant reference montage, such as the CZ montage, and we can see a dramatic change, and the focal slowing is much better seen. In a short video, it is very difficult to give a comprehensive view of the strengths and weaknesses of different montages. Your ability to recognize the relative strengths and weaknesses of these montages will come with experience and with experimentation. However, we can make some broad statements about the strengths and weaknesses based on what we have looked at so far. A bipolar montage, in particular the anterior-posterior bipolar montage, is used most frequently for screening of EEG recordings because it is very versatile. However, it is not the best montage for either focal or diffuse findings, and for this reason you have to consider using other montages when you read. The common reference montage, as we have shown, can be very good for broadly distributed abnormalities, particularly if you use an appropriate reference distant to the area of interest. However, a common reference montage is not particularly good at looking at focal discharges, and this is the main limitation in using this as a screening montage. The average reference montage is generally very versatile and can also be used as a screening montage. However, it is susceptible to reference contamination, as we have shown, which can lead to some misleading findings. The Laplacian montage is extremely good at looking at focal discharges, but not very good for broadly distributed abnormalities. As I have said already, I think it is important to experiment with different montages, looking at different abnormalities and comparing how they look with one montage compared to another. Now that you have a good understanding of the strengths and weaknesses of each of the montages, I hope that you understand that it is important to never read EEG with just one montage.